Okay, so hello and welcome into the next episode of Cyber Potato, where we'll be continuing our journey to find the doggo. So, we left off with fetching the breeds of the dogs. Uh, and this is fine, but not 100%, because um, nowadays there is a little bit of synthetic, uh, synthetic, that's the word, sugar that you can use to make our asynchronous operations a little bit more readable. And uh, don't get me wrong, this is working just fine because we have our data here, uh, but um, we are used to reading the code uh, and writing the code in a synchronous manner. And this is kind of breaking the flow with those dance and chainables and so on and so forth. So this is working just fine but we can make it a little bit modern. And this is where uh, async await syntax is coming in, okay? So we can change how this is written. So to use async await, you just mark your function as being asynchronous with async keyword. And then can get rid, rid of that and say that const response equals await fetch. Okay, so this is like getting through the first then. Okay, and then I can say that JSON is equal to await response JSON. Let me see if I can log it here. Is this, is this fine? Yeah, this is still fine. Okay, so each and single function that would return a promise, like here, you can see the promise, you can see the promise there. We can um, place a wait keyword before it to mark that we are actually, we don't want to work with the promise itself we'd like to await for the promise to resolve and get the return value. Uh, and here's the same. Okay, so how about the catch part of the promise here? Uh, how can we work with the, with the rejected uh, promises here? Well, you just use good old try catch friend here. And you put everything into the catch. And now, uh, let's just change it. And now, if anywhere here a problem will occur through new error, something's fishy. Okay, you can see it being catched. Well, as you can see, it has its ups and downs. To be honest, I like the way that the errors are catched, uh, catched using the promise. Uh, but you know, this is modern JavaScript. It's it's easy to understand. It's really readable. You don't have to go through the chain of promises. You just await for the promise to resolve. Okay. Okay. So I'm not expecting any problems here. So we have our dog breeds here, and this is fine. Now we'd like to actually use that data to populate uh, one of our controls. 
so let's add a select here. I'm going to say select with class breed select. Uh, and I'm going to say nothing. And I'm going to add empty option here. OK, so yeah, great, really. Uh, let's maybe change it to select your doggo. Okay. But I would like it to be in the middle. So <laughs> let's just display flex and flex direction column and this is almost fine because 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 it's a little big a little too big for me uh, so let's just let me see this is this let's try max width of uh, okay. okay, this is cool. So let's add that. This is breed select. Breed select um, max with this, and we will have to add um, align items center. Okay, but then we have to add um, this. Okay, now now it's fine. Now it's fine. You can also add just maybe not max width because it doesn't really change anything. But no uh, wait. No, I I can't type really. I can't type. Okay, yeah. So not max width, but width. And we're fine. So this is how we can add this drop down. Uh, of course, uh, for the time being, it has only um, default, let's call it empty uh, option. And I would like to fill it with the bridge that we just got from the API. So I'm gonna say populate doggo select with dog breeds. Okay. Populate doggo select. Here we're getting breeds. Um, we have to start by finding out our select. So this is going to be document query selector breed select. Okay. And I would like to take each and single breed and transform it into option element for this select. So breed options, breeds map, is it the dark here? Maybe a little bit. Breeds map um, and each breed should be changed into an option. So we'll create one um, option. Okay, option text is gonna be breed name. And option also has a value, which is very important because based on the ID of the breed, we will specify what kind of what kind of image would like? Okay, and return 
option okay yeah also very important thing i believe it should be shown here yeah if you go to your um developer tools in chrome and you go to the network bar here you can see and you can filter by x h r and fetch uh, which means i'm um, particularly the, the asynchronous request that you're doing you can see the call being performed here what is the size of the data that it is returning the initiator so where does it happen it happens here okay uh, how long did it take what was the type and if you click it you will get some additional information so here is the request url here is the request method and this brings us to the http protocol uh, all communication well most of the communication in the internet is being done using the uh, http protocol and it's rather easy really you just have to know that when you'd like to uh, get or fetch some data you're performing get request when you'd like to create some kind of data for example comment um, on the instagram or i don't know placing an order in some kind of commerce shop you're performing post request so yeah let me just write quickly so get to get the data post is to create data some i don't know facebook comment put is being used to um, update or edit the data for example you made a typo in your comment and you'd like to edit it so edit the data fix the typo in facebook comment and then when you realize you wrote something utterly stupid then you use delete to you guess it delete the data okay for now we'll be concerning ourselves with um with the uh, get for the most part but there will be a time where we'll be using other types of requests okay okay um yeah this is fine this is fine what else do we have here some headers and the headers here uh, is a set of metadata that is being uh, sent and uh, also sent to the server and also we get it in response from the server so there are many things here like pagination count the date the type of the content whether the data sent was compressed and so forth and so on for now we really don't have to concern ourselves with it okay and let's populate the data so breed options for each breed option we will just select append the chart breed option and is this even working yeah it's working it's beautiful okay but for the last thing in this episode when i'm clicking this well nothing really happens let's fix that we'll go to index.html and we have to um, add a handler for change event so i can do on change and i will call change doggo method with this okay and then i can change doggo okay 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 let's just um, do const 
change doggo and here and here we will get an event for free and the event is an object describing what actually happened so the user clicked on select so what was the target meaning the option on which he clicked how this was performed uh, just let me show it to you and when i click now i get this even object and uh, it has uh, lots of information but uh, the timestamp the type of event event phase the path uh, in which this happened and so forth and so on but i'm really interested in the target okay because i should be able to read the value that we got there okay yeah so i am able to read the value and the value that we've set here corresponds to the breed id okay so whenever i change this i can get the value okay i believe we should stop now and in the next episode we will actually we will actually get the image of our dog yeah see you there